perfect. Great. All right. Well, uh, thank you everyone for joining us virtually. Um, obviously, this is not what we had initially planned for when we uh, created the, the Summer Happy Hour series, but uh, here we are and we are improvising a little bit. Uh, obviously, I think it's uh, important that we still want to try and get together as much as we can and, and have fun events like this um, You know, that allow, allow people to get together and sort of take our minds off of uh, what's going on and, and interact in some capacity. So uh, even though it's not ideal, thank you all for joining us uh, virtually. Um, so like Becca mentioned, I'm Evan Glantz. I'm the board chair for, for YPD. Um, and tonight we've got Jonathan Levy, who's going to be uh, leading this vir virtual mixology event. Um, just a quick reminder, I think uh, Becca has the ability to mute everybody. Um, so I think she's going to do that. Uh, focusing on your drinks anyway. So um, if you've got any questions, feel free to sort of type those into the uh, into the chat box. And I guess Jonathan can uh, answer those uh, as they come in or afterwards. Uh, and then after we're done with the uh, with the actual mixing of, of the drink, we'll have some time to chat and interact and, and hang out for a little bit. Um, so I guess before we go any further, I just want to thank um, our happy hour chair, Abby Marks. Uh, she's also our vice chair of programming and then the committee members for the happy hour. Those members, uh, I got Caleb Jacobs, Carly Cranin, uh, Zach Kasnitz, Laura Rosenberg, Ruben Amon, uh, and Stephanie Cohen, who's also our vice chair of outreach. Um, so just thank you everyone for, for your help and your participation in putting the happy hour series together. And as we uh, sort of transition into this new innovative method as well. Um, and so it's not just YPD that's innovating, but also the Federation. Um, during the, the quarantining time, Federation has raised, uh, they had a big campaign and they've raised uh, over $650,000 uh, in the Community Response Fund. YPD has, uh, YPD members have contrib contributed a huge amount to that as well. Um, so it's really been a, a, it's been inspiring to see the community come together and help everyone out. Um, and I guess that's what Federation is here for, is to help people and, and bring the community together. Uh, so thank you all for your help and your participation in that. Um, like I said, uh, Jonathan's gonna be giving the presentation and then once he's done, we'll, um, we can stick around and, and chat and drink our drinks and have lots of fun and pretend that we're at a normal happy hour as opposed to doing this virtually. Um, and I guess now that I've talked about Jonathan, I can give the formal introduction and I'm gonna cheat and read his bio here. Uh, so Jonathan Levy is an expert bartender with over eight years of craft cocktail experience. He began honing his craft as the lead bartender for Wit and, Will Wit and Wisdom by Michael Mina at the Four Seasons Hotel uh, in Baltimore. He worked closely with Michelin, uh, with Michelin starred chefs uh, or working closely with Michelin starred chefs helped him develop a culinary approach to bartending and cocktail development. After moving to St. Louis, Jonathan worked for the Capitol Grill, uh, Ben Paremba, and most recently with STL Barkeep, where he provides custom cocktails at various events and pop up bars around town. Uh, so, without further ado, welcome Jonathan, and let's get started mixing these drinks. Great, thank you. Perfect. Can everybody hear me all right? Good. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to start with the two cocktails that I sent over, um, but first we're going to go with the tequila cocktail, the tequila bramble. Um, this is a pretty easy drink, actually. Uh, it seems a little intimidating because it's got the blackberry syrup and some other things to kind of put together, but it couldn't be more straightforward. Um, as I go through as well, uh, I'm going to explain each of the steps as I'm going, um, but please do ask any questions in the chat and uh, Becca will interrupt and I'll uh, do my best to answer everything. So first, the tequila bramble. So generally speaking, a bramble is just a, a style of cocktail, usually involving blackberries and uh, sometimes a blackberry liqueur as well. Um, this one with tequila is one of my personal favorite ways of enjoying this cocktail. So I'm gonna start with three or four nice size fresh blackberries. You can put those in the bottom of your mixer, your shaking uh, container. Uh, then you want to add your tequila. We're going to do an ounce and a half 
of tequila. Uh, when you're muddling, the easiest way to do it and the most effective way to do it is to do the liquor and the fruit. That way when you're muddling, it helps break down the fruit more and it also infuses the liquor a little bit. If you start with just the fruit, you'll kind of just make a mess and it won't really do anything. And if you put all your syrups in, it won't really add as much flavor as with the alcohol. So you just go in, give it a nice couple little hits with your muddler, break it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be like perfect, just sort of mixed into the, uh, to the liquor. And then we're gonna add some fresh lemon juice. For fresh lemon juice, roughly one lemon equals about an ounce of lemon juice, but I do like to measure it because you know some are juicier lemons than others. So for this one, we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. All right, you go right in. And then uh, your blackberry syrup, if you have it, if you don't have it, uh, simple syrup works as well. You could even use the maple syrup that we're gonna use in the next cocktail. They're all flavors that'll work just fine. Uh, but you should keep the same amount roughly. Um, when you're making cocktails that are sort of a sour style, so anything that's got a little bit of uh, sweetener, some citrus, usually lemon juice and the uh, alcohol, the proportion is usually about the same. So depending on how sweet it is, but uh, it's usually about two parts of the alcohol to one part of the, of the uh, citrus to one part of the sweetener. And so that's the same proportion that's in this cocktail roughly. Um, so now that we have everything in the shaker, we're gonna do two things. One, we're gonna prepare the glass first. So we always start with putting ice in the glass that's gonna be served in. We do that so that once we shake it up, we can just pour it over the ice and not worry about putting ice cubes in and splashing everywhere to an empty glass or a glass that's now full of cocktail. Got it. So in your shaker, you want a decent amount of ice, actually. Um, the more the merrier. And if you've got one of these kinds of shakers, it's a, the Boston style where it's two pieces, you want about the top, filled it to about the top of the uh, smaller container. So I've got, I don't know if you can really see that, but I've got that much ice right on, on the inside. Uh, if you don't do enough ice, it's gonna get really watery and it'll just, it, it won't be a good cocktail. But if you have more ice, <laughs> if you have more ice, the right amount of water is going to break down into, from the ice into the cocktail. And as well, it's going to have enough ice in there to really aerate the drink. So it'll give it a nice frothy texture and kind of mix things up a little bit more fully. Um, if you've got one of these and you haven't used them before, the easiest way to do it is to fill the drink into the bottom for the smaller part, place it on top, and then you give it a tap. If you can see when I turn it to the side, there's a slight bend to it. So you want the top of the cocktail shaker to be facing towards you. And then you tap this back edge right here so that it seals into one solid piece. And then once you start shaking, especially with these metal on metal ones, um, the coldness from the ice will help seal the metal even further because the metal will contract. So you worry a little bit more about the first few shakes while it gets cold. But once you get going, you can kind of ease up a little bit on how hard you're holding it. Um, so you don't have to worry about spilling or anything like that. Okay, so you shake it about 10 seconds or until you feel like it's really nice and fully shaken and you really wanna to give it a good shake. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you. Usually you can get the top off pretty easily, but if you're having trouble, you can kind of give it a little tap on the side and that should break it apart. And then you go right ahead and strain that into your prepared cocktail glass. And I like to garnish that with a nice lemon twist Vegetable peelers are fantastic for getting a little twist out of a piece of fruit. Takes a little bit of getting used to, but it works perfectly. And then a nice 
fresh blackberry. All right, so that is your first cocktail, the tequila bramble. Pass that off to my wife. She'll take care of that. All right, were there any questions about the first cocktail or anything that you all want me to go over real quick? Jonathan. Tips to get the shaker unstuck. I just saw it pop up. Yeah. So Lord okay. Piper is asking tips to get the shaker unstuck. Okay. Um, I'm assuming you have one of these kinds of shakers. That's two pieces. Sometimes it's one glass, one metal, glass and a metal. Um, so the easiest way to do it is, as I said, but it's got a little bit of a, a trick to it. So you'll have them in like this. It'll be sealed pretty heavily. So this from the side profile, you can see that it kind of leans, like I said before. I'll show you the same place before. Yeah, so it kind of goes like this and it leans back. So you have the same direction, you point the back side towards you. And then from the side, on mine, you can see there's a little bit of gap here on the edge. You kind of hit it with the palm, the heel of your, uh, your palm right here at where the, where you can imagine the top part is inside the larger part. So you hit it right there and you can pull it apart. If that isn't working, because the another glass ones can get really sealed tight, you can, it just honestly requires a lot of prying. <laughs> Be very careful. I've made a lot, I've made many messes doing it, but um, that's why I prefer the metal ones, but hold the bottom and twist the top is the safest way to do it. Also, how long did it take you to perfect that shake? Very impressive. That shake? <laughs> Um, I got it pretty quickly, but I will attribute it to my uh, old mentor and friend of mine, uh, Aaron Joseph. He's a, someone I used to work with. He was the former lead bartender at the Four Seasons in Baltimore, and he uh, kind of trained me up when I was first starting. And he had a very distinctive shaking style, and he would do like two cocktails at once, and he would like go up in the air like this, back and forth. And I guess uh, I was a young, impressionable 22-year-old and decided that's exactly what I wanted to do. So. Uh, I think I got it quickly, but it's been practiced over the years. So I'm sure it <laughs> looks very smooth and it's not at all expected, but, uh, it's a fun little flair element if you can, if you're up to throwing that in. And Stephanie asked, is there a way to make it when you, where you don't have to shake it? Yeah. Um, so generally speaking, a, a cocktail that has any sort of fresh citrus or any kind of citrus really and especially a cocktail that has fresh fruit in it as well like muddled fruit for blackberries for example um, the easiest way is to shake it because you really it's harder to mix it up if you're as well if you're just like putting in a glass and stirring it or um, just pouring it into a glass it'll be it won't really incorporate as well um, but it actually is a really easy drink to adapt to a blender cocktail so you can throw that exact, actually in a blender, you might want to double it because it just got, needs so much more liquid, but you throw that exact proportion of ingredients into the blender with about a cup of ice and just let it run for about 15 to 20 seconds or until it's smooth looking. And that's a really, really easy way to make a fun summer drink. Um, outside of that, it's not quite going to have the same effect without shaking it, but if you're just very careful to mix it very thoroughly, um, that it would get you close enough. It would be, it would still be very enjoyable. There. Any other questions? If not, we can move along to the second one. So the second cocktail is, uh, actually a personal favorite of mine. It used to be on my cocktail menu in Baltimore. Um, it was offered first as an, a non-alcoholic cocktail, actually. We call them zero-proof mocktails or cocktails. Um, and it's kind of a modified uh, mojito, but I think all around a little bit more flavorful and fun. Um, so I'm going to show you two ways to make it. One way with alcohol, one way with not. Um, and the other difference being, if you happen to be fancy and have crushed ice on hand, 
this is a drink that you can just build in a glass on top of crushed ice, which I'll, I'll show you. Um, if you want to make crushed ice or you, and you don't have one of those refrigerators that makes crushed ice, for example, um, there are some really fun and easy ways to do it. You can buy like a, it's like a canvas bag that you can put ice in and hit it with a big metal wooden hammer, but you can also just wrap the ice in a clean dish rag and hit it with a rolling pin until you have some nice crushed ice and that goes right into your glass. Um, it works surprisingly well, actually. Um, so let's start with the non-alcoholic one and we're gonna build that with the crushed ice. So first things first, you're gonna put a couple fresh mint leaves in the bottom of the glass. Um, with mint, it's a very delicate herb. Um, so you have to be careful not to bruise it too heavily. If you start bruising mint too heavily, it's gonna get a bit of a bitter flavor um, and you want it to maintain that sweet sort of minty aroma without getting too, uh, too bitter. So you wanna give it a little bit of a sort of, not even a crush, you're almost like folding it just to kind of bend it and release some of the oils and then uh, nothing too much more than that. And then you can put that in the bottom of your glass. Then we're going to do the pineapple juice. Um, pineapple juice is one of the few things that I really do think is not any different or not different enough fresh versus canned. It works just fine uh, in my opinion. Um, if you're doing the non-alcoholic version, the recipe that I gave you, obviously leave out the vodka, but then you can double everything else except the ginger beer to help fill up the glass. So instead of three quarters of an ounce of pineapple juice, I'm gonna do an ounce and a half of pineapple juice. Then I'm gonna do uh, an ounce and a half again of fresh lemon juice. I will say that uh, it seems like getting a ton of citrus is a little excessive and crazy, but once you start making these cocktails, you'll find that you run out of just about everything that you thought you had enough of. So if you're gonna make these for a party or for your, even just for yourself, err on the side of getting a ridiculous amount of fruit <laughs> and then having leftover, because there's nothing worse than running out of your cocktail ingredients after one drink. All right an ounce and a half of that. And then uh, the sweetener in this is uh, maple syrup. You can again use a just regular simple syrup. Um, I gave a recipe for that. It's the simplest thing to make, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> it's literally just a equal part sugar and water and you cook it until it melts, it uh, all dissolves. But I think maple syrup is really nice because it's got a rich flavor and it works well with the pineapple and the uh, ginger beer as well. So we're gonna do a, an ounce of that instead of the half ounce that's on the, the menu on the recipe. And then ginger beer, we're gonna do three ounces of that. Um, Fever Tree ginger beer is the one I recommended. Um, any other brand does work. I like Fever Tree in particular because it's got a really nice sharp gingery flavor. Um, Gosling's is pretty good too. Uh, I actually like reads a lot as well, but Fever Tree is also nice because it's in small bottles. So if you're using it for cocktails, you don't end up wasting as much unless you like to just drink ginger beer. Okay, so now that you've got all of the ingredients built in the glass, for the non-alcoholic version that is, you wanna add your crushed ice. It's the opposite. Remember last time I said you put the ice first when you're shaking a cocktail. When you're using crushed ice, you wanna make sure to add it last or at least not fill the glass with it because it is, uh, it's crushed ice so it'll melt very fast and uh, it's harder to gauge how much your cocktail will actually fill up before you put it in or when you put it in. All right. Now the technique here, uh, it's called a swizzle. It's very easy. You get some sort of stick bar spoon, for example, um, and you put it in towards the bottom. You haven't noticed I haven't filled the uh, crushed ice all the way to the top, just shy of it. 
and you kind of go in and you just move things around a little. It's kind of a up and down sort of swishing motion. Again, you're being cognizant of the mint. You're trying to sort of bruise it a little bit, but not too heavily. So you're getting that bitter flavor. And you're making sure you mix it up as well because it is not being shaken. So you're gonna have potential like layers of flavors and you don't really want that. And it's no more than about that much. And then you top that with some more fresh crushed ice. Um, garnish wise, I enjoy the Angostura bitters on top. It's not, despite the name, not so bitter. It's got more of a like tropical sort of spice and like dark herb flavor. But if you're opposed to that still, it's totally fine without it. And then you give it a nice mint sprig. Same thing with the mint sprig. You want to uh, sort of wake up that mint flavor a little. So you give it a nice little slap across the back of your hand. and throw that right in. And this is the non-alcoholic light and breezy cocktail. Did anybody have questions about this cocktail or does anybody try making this cocktail? I wouldn't blame you if you stuck and held out for the alcoholic version. Okay, great. So then I'll move on to the alcoholic version. Uh, the, the more fun version, in my opinion. Um, so this is also a, a, one of my favorite cocktails because it's a really great base. You can substitute pretty much any clear liquor for the vodka and it'll work very well. Um, rum is delicious. Tequila is actually very good with it as well. Um, vodka is just nice because it keeps it nice and crisp and clean. And you kind of taste all the fruit flavors and not so much everything else, but that is really up to your preference. I will make it with vodka because that's what I, uh, I told you guys about. Um, so now we're going to revert to the actual recipe measurements that I gave you in the, uh, the prep sheet. So for this one, because we're shaking it, we're going to do everything except the ginger beer. Uh, into the cocktail shaker. The ginger beer, if you add it to the cocktail shaker, because it's carbonated, it'll make a giant mess, potentially cause your shaker to pop open. Um, and we don't want that. Uh, so first we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of your pineapple juice. And then we're gonna do your lemon juice. Again, three quarters of an ounce. As you can see, I've been doing this for many years, but it's still a giant mess everywhere. Um, so don't be, feel bad if there is just water and citrus juice and ice chips all over the place as you're making this drink. One of the biggest gifts that a bartender has is a bar with a rail that you can just wipe all the liquid into. Because otherwise it would be a horrible, horrible place to visit. It'd be covered in sticky syrups and cocktail residue and just messy business. All right, so three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. And then we're gonna do half an ounce of maple syrup. Again, you can substitute that for any sweetener you prefer. Um, actually a note about that, uh, maple syrup tends to be a little bit more densely sweet. So if you're using a different sweetener that's not quite as sweet, you can use a little bit more, uh, up to about three quarters of an ounce instead of a half to kind of balance that, uh, the citrus out in the cocktail. Uh, now we're going to do your vodka and an ounce and a half of that. Okay, uh, same as before because we're about to shake it. Let's load up your cocktail glass with ice. Uh, in a tall glass like this, you're usually going to be all right if you, what looks like slightly overfill it, because as you pour the cocktail in, the ice is going to partially melt and kind of sink down a little bit. Um, same with when you're shaking it, you'd rather have more ice than not enough. 
if you don't put a lot of ice in your glass that you're pouring the cocktail into, the cocktail will melt the ice, the ice more quickly and you'll have less time to enjoy that fresh cocktail. Just like with the purchasing of citrus, I'm sure you can tell already that the first thing you'll run out of is gonna be the ice. So the more the merrier when it comes to that. Um, anytime you're hosting a party or having people over to do something like this, buy about three times as much ice as you think you're gonna need. Hey, Jonathan. Larissa popped in and asked. My favorite gin. Um, there is, I mean, there's so much out there, but two of my favorites one is a brand so kind of a cop out because they have several it's uh, uncle val's um my favorite in particular is their botanical gin it's got a really lovely like cucumbery watermelon kind of floral flavor to it it's really good um and they also have like a i think they call it a restorative gin which is a sort of traditional um london dry style but sort of an american um take on it uh, aviation is also really great i'm sure you've seen uh, that that's um what's his name ryan reynolds that's his tequila or his uh his gin but it is actually really good despite being a celebrity product all right so uh i'm going to start shaking this again um make sure you give it a little tap towards the back to seal it in uh, about 10 seconds give or take uh if you're using enough ice if you go a little bit more than that it won't make a difference really um all right ready Drain that right into this glass. And then you're going to hit it with your three ounces of ginger beer. If you want to get that a nice slight stir to incorporate everything and then again I like the Angostura bitters on top and a really nice fresh mincebrig and that is the light and breezy with vodka Plume gin is really good, by the way. Uh, really, <laughs> I really like it. It's my favorite gin for um, the Negroni cocktail specifically. It's a really sort of classically flavored um, American dry style gin. It's really good stuff. Did anybody have any questions about this cocktail or did anybody try it and have some success? Uh, I will make another note about this. Um, a third way to make it is to just turn it into a blender cocktail. All of the ingredients, about a cup of ice per two servings and just blend it. And it's like the most delicious summer blended drink. Oh yeah, actually, uh, pardon me one second. Something uh, really fun that you can do I found these little single serve uh, freezer pouches or cocktail pouches on Amazon. Um, they're literally like, uh, like high C fruit punch pouches. They've got a little hole for the straw that you can put it right there and you just fill it up. And uh, I've actually frozen them and it's kind of, this one's a uh, mango margarita. And then you just take it out and then you let it defrost slightly and you've got like a slushy cocktail a really fun way to use some fruit that's about to go bad and to uh, have summer cocktail ready cocktails ready for whenever you want to use them that's so cool you only have to this cocktail this in particular would freeze very well into this application mm -hmm. 
No more questions? Awesome. Have any um, questions? That is pretty much it. If you have any other questions that pop up, I'm happy to stick on and, and answer them. But I was I had a great time presenting all this for you guys. Yes, let's yes. <laughs> join for a cheers. This is my wife, Monique, if you haven't met. Cheers. Mm. Thank you. I'm going to unmute Elliot, who's just going to talk for just Thank you, guys. A bit. Thank you. Hey, everyone. I was having a dog issue there. Uh, thanks, Jonathan. That was fantastic. I made the bramble. It's very good. Awesome. So let's, let's, let's all do a, a group cheers here if we haven't yet. Because uh, this is some good stuff. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. L'chaim. Cheers. L'chaim. So we're planning with YPD to have several more of these uh, types of night events, um, different topics, different subjects. But we'll get a, a variety of different subject experts who can talk to us about different cool things. Um, so if you haven't uh, you know, found yourself Zoomed out, from uh, work or just the Zoom life that we live, uh, you know, tune in and keep keep uh, an eye out for what we've got coming up. Um, so, um, on that note, thank, <laughs> thank you so much for coming. Um, we can hang out a little bit more on here if you're interested in doing that to uh, drink a little bit and talk and bark. Awesome. <laughs> Let me turn off these headphones. Uh, so mine's still stuck. <laughs> I didn't get to do the second.